The following episode is part of a weekly series on the Comics Alliance YouTube channel. If you like the video, subscribe to Comics Alliance for more. You might think you know Ant-Man, but here are 12 facts you might not know about everyone's favorite picnic ruining Avenger. The original Ant-Man, scientist Hank Pym, made his first appearance in 1962 in a seven-page story called The Man in the Ant Hill. In Tales to Astonish number 27, written by Stan Lee and his brother Larry Lieber, with art by Jack Kirby. The story was originally meant to be a one-shot, but the story sold so well, Lee decided to bring him back as a recurring feature. Dr. Henry Pym was a scientist who invented two serums, one that would shrink him down to ant size, and one that would return him to normal. Though ridiculed by the scientific community at first, he tests the serums on himself and successfully reduces himself. Later, he would refine these serums into a vaguely defined substance called Pym particles which allow a person to shrink and grow in size. Pym's first appearance was not as a superhero, as Tales to Astonish was originally a science fiction and horror anthology. His first story was meant to terrify, as a tiny man is almost crushed by ants ten times his size. It was not until his second appearance in Tales to Astonish number 35 that Pym put on a costume and officially adopted the identity of Ant-Man. Ant-Man's primary power is, of course, to shrink down to a tiny size and later to grow to gigantic height. Significantly, he retains his normal human strength even when ant-sized. He also develops a cybernetic helmet that enables him to control and communicate with ants. In his earliest adventures, Ant-Man would travel to the scene of a crime by shooting himself out of a tiny cannon and landing on a pile of ants. But later, he would more typically ride on a flying ant. Pym reveals his secret identity to socialite Janet Van Dyne after her father is killed by aliens. Promising to help her avenge her father's death, Pym gives Janet the power to shrink to bug size as well as fly and shoot string blasts from her hands as the winsome wasp. The two would become crime-fighting partners and co-founders of the Avengers, and later get married and then divorced and then remarried and so on in a horrifying cycle of writers not knowing what to do with the characters. Ant-Man's rogue gallery was made up of some of Marvel's most famous and terrifying adversaries. Just kidding. He fought an evil scientist with an egg-shaped head named Egghead, a man with a top hat and a microphone called The Voice, who used his mutant power of persuasion to make people at a soapbox derby really mad at Ant-Man, and the Porcupine, a fat scientist in a suit covered with quill-like tubes that shoot out gas, stun pellets, ammonia, liquid fire, and detector mines. Hank Pym didn't stay Ant-Man for long. Shortly after joining the Avengers and feeling inadequate next to powerful members, Thor and Iron Man, Pym uses his size-changing serum to make himself bigger rather than smaller and adopts the identity of the 12-foot-tall Giant Man. This would start a trend of changing superhero identities for Pym, as he would later also be known as Goliath and Yellow Jacket, as well as fighting crime under his real name for a while. He was also briefly known as the Wasp during a time when Janet was believed dead, which is kind of uncomfortably Freudian if you think about it. The second person to use the name of Ant-Man was a thief named Scott Lang, who broke into Pym's laboratories to steal Pym's Ant-Man suit and Pym particles in order to rescue the only doctor who could save the life of his daughter Cassie. When Pym discovered Lang had used the Ant-Man powers for a noble reason, he agreed to let Lang keep them, as long as he used them to uphold the law. Lang would go on to become a member of the Avengers. This ended up being bad news for Lang, as he was killed by fellow Avenger Jack of Hearts when he exploded under the influence of mentally unstable Scarlet Witch. Lang's daughter Cassie took up the mantle of crime fighter from her father, using the size-changing powers she had gained from a lifetime of exposure to Pym Particles as the superhero Stature, a member of the Young Avengers. The third Ant-Man was Eric O'Grady, created by artist Phil Hester and writer Robert Kirkman, perhaps best known for creating The Walking Dead. O'Grady was a low-level S.H.I.E.L.D. agent whose self-centered, immoral approach to life led him to be known as the Irredeemable Ant-Man. He gains his powers by stealing a prototype Ant-Man suit from Pym in order to impress women by pretending to be a superhero. Despite his tendency toward being a terrible person, O'Grady nevertheless manages to work his way up through the superhero ranks. First as a member of Damage Control, then the Initiative in the Thunderbolts, before finally joining the Secret Avengers. It's on a mission for the Secret Avengers that the irredeemable Ant-Man is finally redeemed, sacrificing his life to protect a child. Currently, the mantle of Ant-Man is once again held by Scott Lang, who turned out to only actually be fake dead. He briefly joined a new incarnation of the Defenders, slightly less briefly led the Fantastic Four, and fell in love with a woman wearing a robot suit covered in rocks, 
After that, Lang moved to Florida with his daughter Cassie, where he runs a private security firm called Ant-Man Security Solutions. That's it for this episode of You Think You Know Comics. Be sure to subscribe for more great comic facts, like Comics Alliance on Facebook, follow Comics Alliance on Twitter, and get the latest comics news on comicsalliance.com.